I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK. Welcome to my channel. First time passing through, please like, subscribe and share. Um, existing subscribers, thank you for your comments, thank you for your support. I don't always get to respond, but I'm there with you. Um, today's video, it's about house prices post-Brexit. How do you know what's going to um, happen after Brexit, you may ask. And you might well, I might well say, well, I don't know. I'm just going to talk about the drivers, um, the factors that could affect house prices and leave you to deduce the rest. Of course, I'm not a financial advisor. You're going to have to get one. And I strongly advise you do if you are concerned and get one that is registered and approved and all that kind of stuff. But I'm sure um, a lot of you will probably have a financial advisor already if you are worried about um, your future property prices. Anyway, let's get to the very beginning. The beginning, interest rates. Interest rates, interest rates have been low for a very, very long time. I mean, the Federal Reserve had um, August, they've cut the interest rates again because they wanted to stave off instability and they was worried about trade wars. So interest rates have been very low. When interest rates are low, it means people can borrow more. And because they can borrow more, it means house prices go up. So that is one of the determinants or one of the drivers that affect house prices. So low interest rates means your house will more or less um, could increase in price, not drastically, but it could increase steadily in price. Um, what else? Um, jobs, employment, are people in work? We've had so many people out of work. When people are out of work, how do they borrow? They are not in a position to borrow anything. They're not in a position to go to the bank and say, listen, I want a mortgage. And so as a result, the house prices go down. When there's unemployment and people can't borrow in order to buy a home, then the house prices will go down. So you have to kind of watch what's happening with the employment market. What's happening with people? Do they have jobs? You know, and then we have to think about salaries. Are salaries pretty stable? I understand um, since 2019, they've been pretty stable. Um, there's that kind of sign that they're increasing. If they're increasing, it does mean that people can borrow more. And apparently first time buyers are back on a level. So um, that is good. Um, but also, it does mean that inflation affects us. Inflation means we've got less money in our pocket. And once again, even though you've got a nice salary, if inflation is going high, it means you've got less um, disposable income. It means you can't borrow. It means you're not going to have enough to buy a house. And of course, the house price will go down. So then you've got to think about inflation. So what else do you have to think about? You have to think about the recession. If there is a recession, the last, I think we had a recession in the 1960s, we had a recession in the 1980s. And so it seems they seem to happen around about every 20 years. So technically we're due for a recession very soon. If we have a recession, now that is bad news because it means properties go into negative equity. And I remember, I was in the States at the time, but I remember in the UK when I came back, one of my friends told me that her house, what she, she was paying mortgage on her house, I think it was 200,000, but that it had been valued at 120,000 or something because of the recession. So she's paying this hefty mortgage she could hardly afford because the interest rates went sky high. and But she was stuck with it because she couldn't sell it because if she was selling it, she couldn't get to pay the mortgage that she'd taken out. And she'd remortgage. And that happened to so many people. So many people lost their homes because of the high interest rates during the recession. So um, that's another um, driver on the house prices. Um, what else? I uh, might have to look at my notes. Um, increase in salaries makes house prices more affordable. Wage growth is supposed to be improving as of this year, like I said, 2019. And if this is the case, greater household disposable income means they can borrow more. And I'm assuming it means they, if they do want to buy property, they can do that. Um, and if Brexit reduces immigration, it means less demand for housing. 
uh, but more demand for smaller properties. So that can kind of balance out. Um, stock it, oh, the stock of estate agents, that's gone down drastically. Um, apparently, according to the RIC survey, um, people are, are kind of hesitant about putting their property on the market because they're not quite sure what is happening. And I, I'm assuming that, you know, if you have got property, you're not going to really want to put it for sale if you're not quite sure what the house prices are. You might need to live in it. You know, you might not be able to afford two properties. And I understand that buy to let has gone down drastically because of new legislation and taxes. So that's affected the property market. Cash purchases remain the same since 2007, so that hasn't changed. Um, so it's unlikely prices will increase over the next decade, but you never know. So I guess as long as you're um, not looking to sell anytime soon and you haven't got a large mortgage that you can hardly afford, uh, that would be awful because if you've got a large mortgage and you're kind of budgeting on that mortgage and then interest rates go up, then you're, you're going to have problems. So hopefully you've got a reasonable mortgage so that if, um, you know, I know the fixed rates, they are fixed for a certain amount of time, but if you've got a variable mortgage or even the fixed rates, they can change. Um, the forces can change them. So you need, do need to be careful. Apparently 80, eight of the largest builders create more than 50% of the new homes and they're not increasing their supply because they don't want the house prices to go down. It's in their interest to limit supply so that they can keep the house price steady, steady or stable. Um, yeah, I think we have to keep an eye on strong economic growth. Listen in the news. Are they talking about strong economic growth if they're talking about strong economic growth then we don't have to worry too much about the house price but if it's a bit dodgy if you're hearing recession being banded around and stuff like that you need to be concerned but let's hope that um, we keep pretty stable for the time being and so we don't have any undue concerns okay and that's all for now i hope you find it helpful bye bye